Welcome to our after party. Tonight was an HSN night. And um, so hopefully you guys have a little umbrella drink. Mine is water. <laughs> but, you know, pretend. It could be something else. Mm. My husband actually, the sweetheart that he is, when I said I wanted to do, I wanted to have like a little umbrella drink because after all, this is, you know, Tiki Hut time and we're looking forward to summer and all that stuff. So I thought, wouldn't it be so cute to have a little umbrella in my drink? And then as you can see, I have like, this is my, this is the only island gear that I have. <laughs> That's it. That's about as far as it goes right now. I got to find the rest. So anyway, welcome everybody. Happy HSN day. I hope you guys got to watch. Uh, we uh, showcased the Tiki Hut and that was a lot of fun. Um, and so uh, I thought that it would be really cool because we had a lot of people asking, you know, hey, can you do a can you do a coloring of the um, of the Tiki Hut and kind of show that? So I thought, you know what, let's do a little after party and and um, and we'll do that. So we're going to go ahead and switch the camera right now. Here we go. And so this is the one that I did the other night. So this is a card that I made. I do want to show you a couple of cards because I didn't get to show them all. Um, you know, on, on the show, of course, because we don't get enough time, but I love this one. This one is done by Mindy, um, on our design team and it's so cute. I love that she actually took a mini slim line. I thought it was so cool. And then put it on, you know, a regular slim line and look at that. I mean, it's, these things are just so doggone adorable. I love them. I love them. I think that this is probably one of my favorite, um, sets that we've done in a while. Um, so, so cute. And of course, our slimline envelope dies are back on HSN. They have restocked them. So if you do not have your slimline envelope die, I encourage you to get it because I don't think they're going to last. Um, they've sold out of a lot of them already. And if you're not familiar with it, the slimline envelope die, it, it allows you to, to make an envelope that opens on the long side, but you can also make an envelope that opens on the short side. Sh the short side. So it's really, really versatile. And it's also four by nine. So check this out. I mean, it's going to fit big cards, really big cards. You can see our slimline die is smaller like this. And uh, we've got this one layered up and it's still going to fit that. So really, really cool. Very, very versatile. Um, Alan, by the way, is going to be, you know, putting questions up. If you guys have any questions, just look at some of these. This one, I think this is Stephanie. Yeah, look at that. Oh my goodness, her coloring. How cute is that? Really, really sweet. I just... I don't know. It's just so much fun. You can use them with or without the Tiki Hut. I mean, look at these characters. I, I'm telling you, oh my gosh, this guy, this guy right here, I think he's, he's one of my, my, I've got two favorites in this set. And, um, it's this guy who's a little octopus. He's just got his hands full of all kinds of party goodness. Um, and then the other one that I love so much is this little hammerhead shark. Where is he? He's not in this card. So where is he? He's right here. Here's a little hammerhead shark, and he's got that ukulele in his hand. So absolutely fun. Totally, totally rocking cool. Um, I've got a better picture. I know we got here, so you don't have bare screen. Uh, better picture here of the, 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 of the images all colored up. Um, what? No, I just didn't have anything on screen. It was just white. So aren't those so cute? See, this is the guy who's got his hands full. I don't know if he's serving drinks or if he's, you know, just got a big night ahead of him. <laughs> But uh, so cool. Yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, this guy over here looks like he's serving the drinks, and this guy just couldn't resist. So, how much fun. And I love that the sharks, their little surfboards, they've, you know, like taken a bite out of crime here. Totally cool. Um, huh? Where's the other one? Oh, here's the other one. He's actually surfing. Really cool. And this guy's just getting ready to surf. So, they're just so much fun. The sentiments are just awesome. So, anyway, let's get to it. Um, I've already, let me get my glasses. I've already stamped the Tiki Hut, so um, I have no idea how I'm going to color it. I literally just grabbed a whole bunch of colors. I'm going to be coloring with Copics. So I've gone ahead and I've stamped this on Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. Um, somebody's asking, is there a sea turtle in the set? I don't think we have a sea turtle. Let me see who all is in here. We've got some beautiful parrots up here. We've got a crab, a couple of crabs. We have some little fish over here. We've got seashells. I don't see a sea turtle, but we've got all kinds of things in here. We do have a starfish. Well, they get a turtle in there and they 
Yeah, we're going to have to look for, and there's another crab there. We're going to have to look for a sea turtle next time. How's it? You know, those would be really, really cute. I love watching that stuff like on, what is that? On the, um, um, what channel is that? The, um, History, nature, yeah, and, uh, the, 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 it's not, whatever, whatever, the, I can't remember what it's called, but I love watching like all those nature things and stuff. And I love watching, discovery. yeah, discovery. Is that what it is? Whatever. Um, where they're, you know, like, you know, all the little eggs hatch and all the little sea turtles just kind of go crazy and make their way and, you know, just try and survive and get to the ocean. It's totally cool. Spiders. Yeah, we're not going to get into spiders. <laughs> you don't want to, I, mean, I don't, I don't want to be feeling all squirmish and stuff. So anyway, um, so we've, I, like I said, I've gone ahead and I stamped the Tiki Cut. This is on Nina Classic Crest Solar White. Um, this is just on an A2 sized card. So it's uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. And, um, oh, and, and I should say too, Alan's going to be posting questions up there. He's already started. You know, if you have any questions about anything about the kid or anything that we're doing, just give us a shout out. I'd love to know that you're here and I just want this to be fun. So, um, so I have this ready to go. I do, I tend to keep just like a little, you know, piece of, uh, uh cardstock next to me so that I can kind of test colors and see how I like things together. So the big question, of course, always when I get started is where do I start? And um, I don't know. Let me see. How did I color it the other day? Where's the card that I did the other day? Oh, it's right next to me here. So I don't want to duplicate this. So I want to do something a little different. Hopefully we're zoomed in enough. We have two different cameras now. Does LDRS still offer the Seashell Pocket Pail Set? Um, the Pocket Pail, that, that one was actually, the Seashell Pocket Pail Set was actually an exclusive to HSN, just like this Tiki Hut is. And when we do an exclusive, I mean, it's, it's a 100% complete exclusive. So when it is gone, it's gone. So if you like this, you know, it kind of speaks to it. We've had a lot of people asking for that seashell set. Um, you, and you just, I, we don't, we don't even have any. So it's going to be the same thing with this Tiki Hut set. When it's gone, it's gone. Um, so if you like this, I encourage you to order it. Um, let's see. Where should we start? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to do the door. I don't want to do the door. See, here's the thing. I'm looking at this one and I'm thinking I want to do it differently. And I think I really want to make things pop. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to do the wood background in brown and then we'll bring other colors. Like maybe I'll do some turquoise in here and some red door and just kind of change up the colors a little bit. So let's make this fun. So I grabbed a whole bunch of colors that I might use for brown. So we'll see where we land. So here's all my colors, which I don't think you can see. Ah, I don't think you can see them, but I'll just do one at a time. I grabbed a whole bunch of E's. I am working with Copics. And um, I'm going to start off with, this one is E30, because I like to start light. What do I have on here? I like to start light. And, um, and so I'm just going to start pulling some E30 in and this just kind of creates a little bit of a base for me. And, uh, you know, a lot of people like to start dark to light. I, it's just not how I learned to do it. So I usually go light to dark and then back down through the colors again. So I'm not being real perfect with this. I'm just kind of scattering that color around. Is it in focus, Alan? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try my best to remember to talk through this. I don't normally talk when I'm coloring. So um, if I get a little bit quiet, it's just because I'm focusing. I do have this uh, stamped in a Copic Friendly ink, which is our, um, this is our Raven Hybrid ink. It's a, it's a hybrid uh, cross between, um, a dye and a pigment ink. So this is not going to, uh, it's, it's not going to react with the alcohol markers. So that means that we're going to be able to uh, color without that black kind of bleeding all around. So let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of where else. I think I might leave, eh, no, I'll do it. I'm going to get the same color underneath here. I was thinking I might do the color underneath the, um, like on the, the side of the bar, slightly different color. 
maybe not brown, but I don't know. I don't want to mix it up too much. If I add too many colors in here, it's just going to be kind of, I don't know, you're not going to know what's what, right? So, there we go. We got a lot of that tiki hut stuff there. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this up at the top here. Just kind of throw this color in really quick. This is just kind of my base, and if I don't get it all over, I'm not really worried about it. There we go. All right, so now we're going to start to have a little bit of fun. So that's E30, and now I'm going to kind of start to build it up a bit. So I'm going to go up to E31, and let me show you this. So here's my E30. Here's my E31. All right, so it's kind of the same color, just a little bit darker. Did somebody ask a question about the glass mat? Is your desktop glass with flowers painted under the glass or a layer of contact paper? That's a good question. Alan, do you want to zoom out? You want to go to go to, go to camera number two? Oh, that didn't help, did it? <laughs> let me raise this up. This is actually the glass mat. See, let me raise that way up. So you see the end of it? I think it's underneath. I think it's a, and so this is actually a company, and I'm going to go up into the corner here. I'll move this over. Hold on. It's a, it's right Here's the there. corner. Um, it has white underneath, but yeah, I, I designed the whole thing. It's based on some flowers that we have in one of our sets. Um, and uh, go ahead and switch to camera number three. And so all these flowers are actually in one of our stamp sets. Um, and it is glass, and all the color is up underneath it. But it's part of the, I mean, it's, I don't know how they adhere it to the, to it, but Stephanie told me about it. She actually gave me a link to the company that does it so that you can um, kind of customize. So right now I'm just kind of pulling in, um, I'm just kind of thinking about having a little bit dark. You know, in some areas, paying attention a little bit to where some of the lines are that the artist gave us um, uh, when she drew this. I'm going to bring some of this color up underneath here. I tend to start off with just a lot of squiggles. Now, I I'm sure you're going to go, wow, okay, her technique is kind of weird. Um, but you know what? I it's, it's just the way I do it. There is no right or wrong, I don't think. I have kind of an end result that I kind of shoot for, but um, I'm just popping color in just a little bit, just kind of thinking about where some of these shadows might be. I know that there's a lot of people who color and they're much more precise with what they're doing, but I'm not going for a realistic look. I don't want this to look real. I don't care if it looks real. I just want it to have color and texture. And I like kind of a more um, uh, kind of a cartoony kind of a feel. Popping some of that in there a little bit. And just kind of thinking about having those shadows out there a little bit. But, you know, this is really just like the first couple of layers. And you know, I don't know exactly where I'm going to go with it. So we'll see. This is E33. That's my next color up. Um, what is the question here? Will Jewett, a.k.a. the Crafty Crafter, I would love to get my hands on some LDRS stamps and dies. Do you have any idea when you will be able to ship to the UK again? Oh, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. As soon as we figure out how to be honest with you. We've got to get registered. Um, the uh, Brexit kind of messed us up a little bit, to be honest with you. And um, so we need to, we need to figure out how to do that because when we tried to ship to the UK, um, it's requiring us to get uh, registered for that. And was that what it was? Yeah, it was we have to get all registered. Yeah, so we have to, it's, there's a whole process that we need to learn about and we weren't prepared for it. Um, 
So it's not that we don't want to ship to the UK. I mean, I, I mean, we love shipping worldwide. Uh, we just need to get we need to get that sorted out. And to be honest with you, we need we need the time to do it. Because it's not an easy process. I know there's going to be an application and stuff involved in that, and we have to do a little bit of learning and see what all is involved in it. So all I'm doing now is adding just a little bit. This is my E33. I'm just kind of touching down, kind of going over where I put my E31. I'm just adding another layer of color, not quite as much as I did with E31. You notice I do a lot of scribbling. And um, it's not perfect. I don't worry about it being perfect. It all comes together in the end. I mean, you can see just with those three layers, it's starting to look like something at least, I think. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go back to E30, and this is where it kind of starts to look a little fun, a little more like something. I'm just going to go over some of these areas with my E30 and kind of blend them out just a little bit, and it just starts to kind of combine some of those edges of those colors together, makes it look a little more smooth. And then I'm going to add some more in there as well. I always like to have a lot of texture in things that are supposed to be, you know, have like a wood look to them because um, I love like real knotty wood. Um, I don't like it when, you know, I don't, I, I don't like it when it looks like it was like machine done, you know. I like it to look real natural and Okay, so that starts to blend that in just a bit. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit darker now. What color is that? Do I want that one? That's this one. This is E35. Notice I'm sticking in the E3s or E30s right now. I'm going to add this 35, but I'm just going to touch in just where I want some of those darker areas. And right now, this whole thing has a real strong kind of caramel look to it, which we're going to do something about shortly because I don't want this whole thing to end up looking like caramel. So I'm being a little more selective right now with where I put this darker color. Just kind of here and there because if I put it everywhere, it's not going to stand out. It's not going to make a difference. And I really want it to, as I get a little bit deeper and darker with the colors, I want them to have more meaning, I guess. So I'm going to come up underneath here just a little bit, just to, there we go. All right, so right now it kind of has that look of a, I don't know, like an ice cream cone, I think. <laughs> but we're going to change that up a bit. So now I've got E43, and you can see that that has more of a taupey kind of a look to it, almost mushroom-like. So I'm going to pull some of that in, and we're going to tame down some of that caramel. I'm going to come in from the sides, and, I, you know, I'm literally doing this on the fly. I don't know what this is going to end up looking like. I don't know if I'm going to add too much and, and uh, end up hating the colors together, but this is just what I'm doing right now. In the tighter, smaller areas, I'm not adding as much. But this, I think, is going to add a little bit of, an, of age because it has more of a mushroom kind of a color to it. So it's going to tone down some of that caramel. Let's just hope I don't do it too much. We'll see. It warmed it up just a little bit. What do I have next? Let me see if I want to use this. This is E25. That might be a little too red. This is E37. We're back to the 
thick caramel kind of look. This is one of my favorites. This is E44, and I love this. Look at this next to, when I put that next to E43, look, it's a big difference. We have just one, you know, a one number jump in color, but look at the difference on that. That one we're going to use sparingly. So this one I'm going to put, this is like where we could say, okay, what kind of shadows do we want in here? Some of the really, really rich areas. How pretty that is. It just warms it right up. And, you know, I may add more of this later, too, once I start getting the other colors in. I may find that I want to add this in some other areas. Right there, right up under there. But this is at least going to be the start. right up in like those creases where you want to have that darker shadow and a stronger accent. You know, like kind of like where things start to come together in some of the corners. Okay, we'll see. I'm going to leave it like that for now. And I may come back to it. I've even got an even, I've got a much darker one, which is E47. But I'm going to leave that for right now, and I'm going to come back to my 31. This is my 31. All right. And I'm going to use that to smooth out some of that that I just put in there. That 44. Just going to soften it a tiny bit. Blend it out just so that those lines aren't quite so strong. Just a little bit. And then I'm back to my E30 where I've got those really super light areas. And I just want to smooth those out and highlight just a bit. Any areas that I've left white, this is where I'm going to touch in there too because I don't want white areas. And it's going to move some of those browns around a bit too, and that's fine. Just kind of starts to incorporate those colors together a little more. All right, so we're going to go with that. It almost looks kind of gingerbread. All right, so that is my ease right now. So I'm going to set those aside. Um, red is a color that I usually, I, I like to work with red last if I can, because red can be, it, it, it can be pulled very easily into other colors. So I think I'm going to do that door in red, and I think I'm going to do, um, around the windows in, let me see, what am I going to do? I grabbed a bunch of colors, so I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. So my, 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 I'm thinking of using either these bright, brighter blues here, or I'm thinking of using my blue greens. And you know what? I used the brighter blues on the other one. I think I'm going to use this blue green here. So let, let's see what I have. I've got BG11. 13 and 15. So let's start with BG 11. And this is going to take me probably a little bit longer than it normally would because I'm talking to you through it and instead of just pulling color and throwing color down. Just so you know. <laughs> um, Actually, let's see. I'm going to take that right down the sides as well. Because the door is really the three boards in the center. And I think I'm going to leave the counter to be red like the door. That's what I'm thinking. 
So that is BG11. Here is 13. So let me show you over here. So here's 11. And then I've got 13. Quite a bit stronger, actually. I'm just going to very gently kind of flick that through. Just to add a little bit of color. But I want it to look kind of like strokes. You know, I want to see those brush strokes and we're going to blend that out a little bit afterwards. Kathy's saying, what size card are you making? Right now, I'm, this that I'm working on right now is an A2. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. But I'm not actually going to make a whole card. We're just doing some coloring, just some coloring fun today. There we go. And then let's take BG15. And I'm going to go right over that. Just darken that in the areas where the wood kind of comes together, where we would see that shadow, where it might be a little bit darker on the ends. There we go. That's the darker one right there. So you can see how the colors climb up. And then I'm going to go back to BG11 and just come across very gently in the center there, leaving some of those streaks, but just kind of bringing that color together a little bit. But I like to see the texture. I don't want it to be perfectly blended. So that's about where I would go with that for now. We're gonna be adding some more to it later. All right, we've got one up here as well. Let's just kind of do that same thing there. That's BG11. And then 13. Really quickly flick the color. I'm not even worrying about, you know, if I stayed in the line there because I'm going to be shadowing that stuff anyway. So like I said, I'm not real perfect about how I color it. Just flicking that color a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to my BG11 and just kind of blend over those centers where that white is so we don't have that white. Okay. Really simple. Next we're going to do that. What is it? Is it a thatch roof on it? I pulled some colors here. I don't know how these are going to work. We'll see. Um, so I've got a Y15, which is a pretty bright yellow. I don't know if I'm going to like that. So let's see. Let's play with these colors a little bit. That's an awfully bright yellow. And then this one is Y17, kind of orangey. YR23, that starts to warm up a bit. And then I grabbed this one too, I thought it might be fun to try, YR27. So this is kind of the color, that's what I'm thinking of doing for the roof. Um, loved the die cut card. Somebody's saying, will there be a tutorial showing how that was done? Are we talking about this one? Is this the die cut yeah. card? Can you do the one you're doing now that way or no? Yeah, I could actually, I think I'd have to, yeah, I think I could. Let me get this colored up and we'll figure that out. So I'm going to pull this color in. So let me show you which one this is. This is Y15. I'm literally just flicking this card, card, the color, down each of these areas. I'm not worried about making it perfect. Notice I'm not just going through and scribbling and coloring this all the way in because I like to see the brush strokes going in a certain direction. So that's why I'm a little choosy with that. I don't just color the whole thing in. I also like to leave a little bit of white in there as I do this for now. I'll probably color some of that up, but I'm very, very particular about the direction of my brush strokes when I do stuff. So 
that's why I'm not just scribbling the color all through it, just to coat it. It's not my goal right now just to coat it. It's my goal to get a base layer down. But I want that base layer to go in the direction of, you know, how I'm working as well. So, okay, so this one is 17. So this is Y17. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing, only not as much. And this is it's looking a little orange, huh? I don't know. We'll see if we're going to like it. A little less, so I'm not cov covering up all that yellow. And I promise you, I, I have no idea if we're going to like this in the end. <laughs> but this is, this is really the process. It's just kind of like, I'm going to grab some colors and see how they work together, see how they play. And um, if I do something I don't like, I will do what I can to fix it. Um, but, you know, it's all in fun, right? It's just crafting and coloring and art. And, you know, I'll, I'll say this too. I might love something. I might do something that I like and you might hate it. Um, because, you know, we all have different things that we like and different things that we don't like. So, you know, opinions are going to differ. And that's fine too. Okay, so next is YR23. And you can see by the time we get to YR23, it's going to start warming up a bit. So it's not going to be quite as yellow. So I am going to do a little bit less with the color and just kind of tighten that up where, um, you know, like up at the top where we. where things are connecting. And that starts to kind of warm it up a bit. So don't be afraid to try a color that looks a little too bright because as you start to layer things, you may find that you like them better, that you like it better. And it's good to think about what color you want underneath. You know, so, you know, we're seeing all three of those colors that I laid down there but they're not all standing out real strong. So that first yellow that I put down is, uh, it's kind of taking a back seat, but it's still there. So we have that, that bright highlight. And just by doing these little brush strokes, that's kind of giving us that, is it a thatched roof? Is that what it is? Kind of gives it that little bit of texture. And now I'm going to go just a little bit with this YR27. You can see how dark that one is here. I'm going to really use that sparingly, but that's going to have a big impact. Just a little bit up at the top. Look how pretty that ends up being. Oh, I like that. I think I'm happy with this color combination so far <laughs> there's still time to mess it up <laughs> a little bit there we go any questions from anybody Not that I've seen. no There we go. So notice with each color, as the color gets darker, as I move through the darker colors, I'm using less and less and less. And this one, I don't even think I'm going to blend this one out because I don't want this to start looking like just one color. I want to see the texture. There we go. That's nice and bright. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that for now. All right. So let's see. Um, I think I'm going to move to red at this point. That's always a little scary when you go into red. Um, but I'm going to make sure I'm not going to be, you know, interfering with a lot of other colors. So to start off with, I've got R30. So let me go through my R's here. That's my R30, which is very pink. So that's going to be my first color down. And I've got R32 is next. This is one of my favorite color combinations of red. 
So that's R30, R32. Here's R35. So that gets to be a brighter red. And then this one is R37. Isn't that just so pretty as we climb up through those colors? I just love this. It's one of my favorite combinations. I don't, I, I'm, I shouldn't say I don't like. I'm not a huge fan of orangey reds. I like, I like um, brighter, pinkier reds. So this one is R20. I'm literally just kind of filling in some of this underneath. I'm just kind of sketchy. You said R20 or R30? I'm sorry, R30. My mistake. They are, I'm going to go over here as well. This is going to be that little bar thing. Um, I think I'm going to do some of this over here as well, the little kind of trim that we've got here. And then on the side. Uh, and then you know what? I'm going to do it on here, this little buoy. All right. So let's see. So that was R30. This one is R32. And uh, starting up at the top, and I'm literally just pulling that color, pushing that color. So I'm flicking. So I'm putting the marker down where I want the darker color. And then as I flick the marker, I lift up. And that's when you, you get that lighter color in there. So I put the marker down where I want the darker color, and as you flick, you lift up. All right. Sheila is saying, um, will you ever have embossing folders? I would like to see some slimline ones. You know what, Sheila? You know, we've, we've talked about doing embossing folders. Um... And, you know, I'm not sure, only because, you know, we've done embossing folders before. We're doing a lot with stenciling right now. And one of the things I think is really, really cool with stenciling is that you can actually use your stencil um, to emboss through uh, on your machine with your die cutting machine. So given that, I would almost rather have stencils and have it be kind of a dual function. Um, So that's that's we're, we we are discussing it to to figure out you know what is going to be the best for us and you know I mean I think if you know if you if, if you know any, anybody who knows you know our products and the way that we do things we're you know I, I I love having multi use kind of things and I love it when you can you know use products kind of across the board and mix and match and do more than one thing I'm I'm all about kind of you know more bang for the buck kind of thing. Um, and, um, that's kind of my thinking with embossing folders, to be honest with you, is there's only one thing you can do with them. So I'm a little stuck on that. So I don't know. We'll see. We're talking about it. Okay. So now you see the huge difference here in the color. So I'm going to go back to my R30 and I'm going to start kind of in the center and start pulling some of that color just to balance it out a little bit. Eh, I'm going to try the next color up. So it didn't really move as much as I had hoped. So we're going to go to R32. There we go. That's giving me a little bit more. Giving me a little bit of a better blend. So this is R32. And now I'm being a little more precise. I'm going from top into the center, like from one side into the center, and then from the other side back and meeting in the center. That way I'm not pulling that color all the way across because I still want to maintain those lighter areas, those kind of highlighted areas. Be a little more precise with that little buoy there. Okay, so now I have my darkest color, which is my R37. So Smoky Blue Rose is saying all of my pocket pails will have a chance to visit the hut. That's cute. Very cute. I hope so. You know, we're 
very careful to size stuff the same so that you can mix and match and you know I love the pocket pails they're you know and I, I think the name is so cool I think it's uh it's fun because you know the whole idea behind the name first of all if you're not familiar with that is that they're so tiny you can put them in your pocket but it's kind of like you know a dual purpose name because you know we create these little pockets for them with all those little doors and all those little windows and things and I I just I love that they're all sized the same you can you can really play with them I mean if you want to turn this tiki hut into a Christmas tiki hut go for it you know um, you know you can use some of our other sets and pull some of the like little Christmas lights and stuff into it and start playing with that and um, you know decorate this out for for Christmas um, that could be really cute this is my 32 r32 um, and I'm looking at the door and I'm not happy with it. So, I mean, it looks like the door is very, very worn in the center and I'm not thrilled with that. So I'm going to pull out my R35 and pull some of that in just to give that a little more and same thing here. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of playing until you get the look that you want. Be patient with it. I think when I added that lighter color, I was pulling too much color out of it. And so here I'm back to my 32. And, you know, it really is important that you have the right paper. Whenever you're working with, you know, keep in mind that your paper is one of your tools, I guess is one of the things I'm trying to say here. So when I'm working with Copic markers or alcohol markers, I want to make sure I'm using a paper that works with it. That way I can continue to use and build color without oversaturating it really fast. When you turn this over, you should get fairly even, um, you know, saturation of color. So it looks pretty good to me on the back. I, I mean, I, I don't really pay too much attention to that, but, you know, I want to make sure I'm not oversaturating. If that were really, really strong in an area, then I'd be oversaturating the paper. But this this paper, this is the, the Nina uh, Classic Crest Solar White. This is... This is pretty good paper. I mean, it's really, really good. It doesn't, doesn't oversaturate really quickly. So here we go. So we've got, we're moving on with our little tiki hut. Let me see what colors, what other colors do I have here? Um, <laughs> let's pull some greens in here. Uh, this is a G24. I've only got two greens. That one is G07. Let's see what we can do. I should have probably pulled more. This is 24. Um, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> put some color, <clears throat> excuse me, from the center on out. There we go. And then my G07, I probably should have pulled a few more greens. But we'll see what we can do here. And I'm just going from the center out. Hmm. Yeah, I wish I had another green. Alan, can you do me a favor? Can you grab me a G20 over there? G20, so much? G20, right in the center where the greens are. G20. I'm going to get a drink of water real quick. G20. Yep. Oh, that kind of a yellow green. Wax white. Uh, yeah, but it is a green. We'll wax off. It's kind of a yellow green. It's not it's not wax on or wax off. Okay. It's going to help me blend a bit. It might be too light. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, that's too light. Um Give me an 82. Let me see where that one is. See, this, this is the benefit to having the colors right in front of me. All right, I like that better. Okay, so I've got an 82 here. When I'm working at my actual craft desk, I have the colors right in front of me, so I can just kind of grab whatever I want. So I am going to kind of fill this in just a little bit.
And now we're going to kind of play with this again. G24. It's still darker, so that's good. I don't know if this is my favorite green combination, but there we go. I would probably go with something a little bit brighter than this normally. I am going to grab my G20 now because I want to kind of smooth that out and blend that a bit, but I don't want I don't want to darken it anymore. I'm not in love with this green combination, I gotta tell you. This is my G82. I don't think it's bright enough and um, for a tropical kind of thing, I would I would rather it were just brighter. I don't love the colors together. But we're going to work with it. I'm going to try something here. Let's see. R35 right in the center. Why am I putting a red in the center? Well, because they're opposite on the color wheel, and so for creating depth, um, they work nicely together, and I wanted something really dark in the center. So that just kind of helps me to shadow that and deepen it in the center. I think it looks really pretty, much better. I think that looks better. Still not in love with the green combo, but I think that putting that little bit of red in the center helped because it just darkened it a little bit that I couldn't get with with the colors that I had. So, okay. Um, I am going to put a little bit of green down here because we have these fun little wispy little green kind of watery plants there. Um, And this is 07 upside down. We brighten that up just a little bit. There we go. So let's see. I'm going to go back and I think I'm going to do these little bits of wood right here in that turquoise color. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to like this, but we'll see. So I've got, what do I have here? I've got B02. I like the idea of putting a lot of different summery colors in that 04. And I think that's 05. So I'm going to pull this in here, like we just kind of painted that wood. That zero two. Kind of pretty. I'm going to do it on these too. Why not? Because not everything has to be brown, right? I mean, maybe this is the Caribbean. And you get those beautiful bright colors. Are you laughing at me, Alan? No. Why? They have beautiful bright colors. And, you know, things you, you don't see that anywhere here. I'm going to actually put it on here, too. And then I'm going to put it right down there. Let's go with one of these. Just kind of sprinkle the color around. That way it doesn't look so out of place anywhere. So that was 02, this is 04. There we go. 
So I'm going to where I want the darker color, just kind of pick a side, right? So I've done a lot of things where I have those like shadows on the kind of on the left side. So I'm just going to be consistent with that. And just bring some of that color over. All right. Actually, you know, let's see. So the next step is going to be 05, which is going to be brighter. Richer. So I'm going to use just a little bit of that. I'm, I think I missed one. I think I missed this one right here. Any questions from anybody? Oh, I see one up here. Christy is saying, are you going to carry six by six paper for the out of this world kit? I haven't used the paper because I love it too much. You know what? I think we are going to be putting the papers up in the store. We've just got to get them out there. We also have to start putting more paper in kits. Yeah, we've talked about putting more papers. So would you guys want to have like maybe two of each sheet in the kit instead of just one? What kind of typical paper? Um, in a typical paper pack, you would have, um, in a full paper pack, you would have uh, two of each of 12 sheets. Okay. Oh, I like this. It's looking summery. Okay, so B02. Alan, do we have a B00 over there? Actually, let me just take this across and see how it is. Yeah, give me a B. Uh, nah, give me a B. I do have a B zero zero and I have a B zero zero zero. Yeah, let me. Yeah, give me a B zero zero. This is a zero two, and I think I'm filling in more than I want. So this is a B zero zero. I'm going to use that for my blending instead. What'd you say? You said it's put on paper. Ah. Really, really light. That's my B00. I'm literally just kind of filling in where those white areas are because I still want them to be kind of, you know, highlighted, but I don't want them to be white. I don't like seeing white all throughout because, you know, I mean, while you're going to have shadows and darker areas and stuff like that, that doesn't mean that there's always going to be white spots everywhere, right? So I'm going to use this lighter color just to kind of blend that out a bit. And then I am going to come back in with my 05 and just kind of sharpen some of those darker areas there. A lighter one again. And just darken it. Just really strengthen the darkest area of color. Really makes the color changes pop, I think. All right. Cool. All right. So, what else do we have in here? <laughs> Let's see. You know what we don't have is any purples. And I do have some purple in here. So let's see what I've got. What did I grab? I grabbed some. Okay, so I've got violet. So V01. There we go. V01. 04. Ooh, look how pretty that is. And then 06. Those are really pretty. So I think that this violet is going to be really pretty next to this blue. So this is my V01. Isn't that pretty? I'm also going to put that on this little chair over here. Um, and then you know what? I'm going to put it here on this little walkway. Because why not? Why not? V04.
and then the darkest, which is V06. There we go. And then I'm going to come back in with my lightest, which is V01. Just kind of bring that together. So I'm flicking from the top down to the center and then bottom up to the center. That way I'm not over combining that color. And it still allows me to leave those highlighted areas in the center. All right. So what do we have? We have purple. What other color can I put over here? I think I'm going to put, I don't want an aqua or a blue. Red would be too close to the red over here. You know what? How about a yellow? How about a yellow for one of these seats? Because the only yellow we have is up here. So I've got my Y15, which is my really, really bright yellow. And then I've got Y17. Just to kind of darken it up. But I, I'm not going to go real heavy like I did up there. So I'm going to keep this light with my 15 and my 17. Did I do what where? The question. Oh, I didn't see the question. I'm sorry. Regan is asking, could you have added a yellow green to the palm tree to give it some brightness? I absolutely could have. And I would have done exactly that if I had had all of my colors in front of me, um, which I don't have because they're seated at a, they're seated across the room from me. So <laughs> I only grabbed, you know, what I, I, I only have what I grabbed. So yes, that would have been a great idea. All right, so this is where, you know, when I'm playing with some of this stuff, I just kind of start to say, all right, what colors do I have in here? I don't want to add more colors because I have a lot of colors. I have to color up this other um, surfboard. So I'm going to go with the blue-green. So that's my BG11. Wrong one. BG13 is here. So I start, I just kind of start saying what colors do I have around here that I, you know, that I've already started working with so I don't introduce too many colors. And then this is BG15. And then I'm going to go to the lightest one, meet in the center from top to the top to center and then bottom up. I'm also going to grab a little bit of my yellow here because I have a little bit of this board here. I'm going to put some just Y17 there to brighten that up. And then what color am I going to put on that board? Hmm. I think I'm going to go yellow. I think that'd be pretty. Ooh, and I missed the top of that one, so I got to get that too. So let me bring my brightest yellow, which is Y15, and then Y17. Here I am going to go one more darker with YR23 just to really deepen and richen that. I'm going to do a little bit at the bottom of that too. And then I'm going to pull that into the center with my bright Y15 from the top center and then bottom up to the center and it leaves that really bright spot in the middle. All right. So let's see, what else do we have on here? We've got a door handle. Um, let's see, what do I want on my door handle? Can't do red. Here's a B02. I'm literally pulling from the colors that I have in here. B02. And then 04, just to kind of richen and brighten that up a little bit on the outside. Um, need to get the top of this one. There we go. That was with my B13 because I've already got that color in the bottom part of the board. A couple more things. I know we're at 930 already, but this is an impromptu, right? So let's see. What else do we have? Let me put these colors aside for a moment. And I'm going to go back to my E's. I have an E30, and I'm literally just going to go along and very kind of quickly color up 
this tree. That's E30, 31, Okay, leaving a little bit of texture in there. What is this, 33? Notice I'm using less and less. So I'm, I'm covering up some of what I've done, but not all of it. I love doing little squiggles to have texture. Here is 35. Use this sparingly. Just kind of come right down that side there. There we go. And now I'm going to go back to 30 and fill in those white areas. Come across and just blend a little bit. cartoon-like. That's what I'm going for. It's what I, I like to do kind of cartoony stuff. So now I've got 43. So now we're going to get into that kind of that kind of mushroom kind of color where it has a little bit of a taupe, a little bit of a gray in it. Pull some of that around. And then last Where's my 44? It's my favorite. It's my favorite E. I'm literally just going to kind of dab some of that in there. Just for a little bit of texture. And I think it looks pretty. Okay, so the last thing we've got to do in here is these little, I don't know, the docks. Let's do three colors. So we'll do that is yellow. Um, this is BG13, do that one. And then how about red, R35? All right, so it's going to be, this is yellow, which is, what did I choose? R, uh, Y15, one, two, and so every third one is going to be is going to be um, yellow. Let's hope I got that right. <laughs> and then BG13. BG13. And then the red. There we go. And then I'm going to work my way down here too. So because I have the yellow and that aqua there, I'm going to start with red. Uh, next from red is going to be aqua. Right there. And then the yellow. And of course I can do a lot of shadowing, shading and stuff like that with that to, to finish it up. But that is, that's a basic... I mean, that's a real basic kind of you know color up of that. Um, if I wanted to add some really quick shading, I would go to a W because I like to warm things up a bit. Um, and I would do some very simple shading just like this. Just like that around. See how that just kind of warmed up some of those areas a bit? Just to warm it up. Um, you could even graduate to a W3. But I don't really think this needs it. I mean, I think if you, you know, if you want it to stay like real tropical looking. Alan, I do need you to grab a color for me because I wanted something for these little windows here. And I can't remember what the color is. Um, what letter is it? It's a B. Okay. And it's like a zero zero or a triple zero. I can't remember what it is. Yeah. Not a BG, but... um, yeah, it might be a BG. Uh, give me a four. Is there a triple? Mm, yeah. Let me see. Ooh. Did you just hit the camera? I hope not, but I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one is a B. I don't know if this is going to show. This might not be the one. 
yeah you can't really see it but it, it actually is putting down some color it just kind of gives me a little bit of color as though it's a window which is kind of what I I like to have as though there were as though there were glass there can you see that at all I don't know if you can see that yes well I can see it on the trying to add more going darker than I normally would but believe me it's got something there a little porthole there we go okay so from here if we wanted to make <clears throat> one of those cards I'm gonna get a little drink here because I'm doing a lot of talking um, Alan I'm gonna need you to get me a sheet of Nina paper Actually, do I have some here? No. Um, no, I've got something here. Okay. So I'm going to get this ready with the die, Alan. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Anybody know who that is? Oh, no. Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill. I got to hook up this machine. Ah, okay. Well, I'll get to tape in this while you do that. You, <laughs> hey, you better not hear a crash. That would not be good. Oops. <laughs> All right, I forgot I have to have this over. Okay, so. We line up these, you, you can see right through it. So I'm lining up my die, zzz, dies, <laughs> um, by the windows and doors. You can see right through them, so it's pretty easy to line up. And I'm gonna go right over them both to hold them in place. I like to have more than one piece of tape holding down each die because this tape is not very sticky. And after all the coloring, I don't want things to move. Okay, this one is not, not making me feel secure. So let's go like that. All right, so I'm going to hand this off to my hubby. And while he does that, I'm going to cut a piece of paper real quick. So I've just got cardstock here. I'm going to trim this down. It's a regular letter size sheet, eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to trim it down to five and a half and then four and a quarter. So I'm at A2. All right. I might as well do the whole thing. Okay. And then, of course, the tape sticks when you don't want it to, right? <laughs> All right, so look how great that is. So let's set that aside for just a moment. And we're going to remove this die. <coughs> Oops. I have made a mess. And... And so then the next thing is to use just the outer die and where'd my tape go and cut that with white cardstock. I don't really have to tape this, but I'm going to just, all right. So I'm going to let my assistant cut that. Beautiful assistant. My beautiful assistant. Yeah. She looks wonderful in her evening gown, even better in the swimsuit competition. <laughs> So if you look at the back of this, you can see that we've already cut through where these little windows and doors are. So all you need to do is push from the bottom, pop those up because it's already scored and ready for you. And you can see how perfectly it cuts right on those lines. I mean, these dies line up beautifully. The door is going to open too. You can see how easily that happens. Isn't that perfect? 
love it. And then with this other one, I'm sorry, remove that. This is what I have, okay? So if I take my, this is how I would do it anyway. I would take my scoring tool here and I'm gonna line this up and I'm going to score right across the top of this. You can just kind of decide where you want it to be, okay? Um, I'm gonna score on this line right here because this one is going to be the back of my card and I'm scoring it. See the score line I put in there? All right, so if I fold that, I can now go in both directions just so it's loose. So I can now put my adhesive across the top of that. Uh, let me do it on here just because I don't want to get it on my glass. I don't like getting it on the glass. I know it can be cleaned, I know, but I don't like doing it. <laughs> All right, but I do want a good amount of adhesive on there. And then I'm just gonna line these up. And now I can open up my card. See? So give it a good little push there to make sure it's gonna open and work. And now you're good. So now it opens up. It's perfect. And it'll stand up. All right. Now, if you want to, you could put characters on the inside here if you want. Or I could have backed it with another die cut behind it and put some little characters between those two if I wanted. I mean, you have a lot of options here. But this is one way that you can create a card with that beautiful Tiki Hut shape. Um, you can also, you know, when you line up that die, another way to do it would be to line up your die so that this part goes like over the fold. So if this were, if this were my card base, let's say, you know, I would line it up. So this goes off the edge. See how the die goes off the edge there, but you know, in that way you're going to maintain some of that fold when you open and close your card, but you're going to lose some of your Tiki Hut. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't, that's not my favorite way of doing it. I think this way you, you really maintain the full Tiki Hut image and it looks super cute. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it was a fun little, almost impromptu. Alan, you want to switch the camera back for me? Hey everybody. <laughs> Hopefully that was a fun little impromptu. I hope you enjoyed watching the coloring. I hope it wasn't too boring for you. I know that can get a little bit boring, but I think it's fun. And I think it's just really, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of relaxing. So, um, you know, and normally it wouldn't take me as long to color it because I wouldn't be talking and, you know, I would just kind of have the music on and I'd be going for it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I can, I would normally color this up in maybe about a half an hour, but um, you know, with talking, talking through it and explaining things and stuff, it does take a little bit longer. So, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys will try it because it's really fun to do and it's very relaxing. And I think that these things really, really do pack a lot of punch. So, um, anyway, that is it. I mean, we've gone over by what, about 15 minutes? <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. sure. Well, no, because it was 8.30 to 9.30. So we've gone over by 15 minutes, but. I hope it was worth it. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun. I love coloring, so it's always fun for me. So um, anyway, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. We will be back. Um, what day is today? Is today Tuesday? So we'll be back Thursday. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. I'm a little tired, but it's all good. So we will be back Thursday, and I'm not sure what I'm going to be working with, so we'll have to get that sorted out. But Thursday night, 7 p.m., We'll see you later. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.